Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome to the channel. Now, if you watched the channel before, you'll probably already know that I usually work on cars that are from 2000 to 2010, sometimes newer, and once in a while, older or a lot older. But the reason I tend to focus on the newer than 2000 range is because they have OBD2. Now with OBD2, with the scanner, the car can tell you what's going on for a lot of things. So you can troubleshoot more easily, run diagnostics, and even test systems. Now today, we're gonna to check out the Top Don CarPal, which is a Bluetooth OBD2 scanner. So you can use it on any car, get information, run diagnostics, and more. So let's check it out. All right, so in the box we have a little quick user guide, which walks you through how to connect it, what you need to do with the app to register and log in. And here we have the scanner itself. It's got a nice angled housing with soft touch on it and the gloss accents. I like the semi-transparent plug here, it looks nice. And we also have a QR code and a code for the activation, which we'll do in the app. Now all we have left to do is to go test this out in a car. All right, before we get started, we need to register this. So we're gonna open the CarPal app. So now we need to add a device. We're going to go to the me section right here, go to device management, and we're gonna create an account. So just put in your email address and follow the prompts. So then in device management, we're gonna add a device. So either you can do it with the adapter plugged into the car or you can scan it. So it's a scan, it's gonna allow access to the camera and we're gonna scan this right here. This will automatically pick up the information. We'll hit activate. So if you choose some brands to activate for the device, I think I'm gonna do Land Rover. Just gotta get a Benz for Mercedes Benz. And I'm gonna confirm those two for now. It says you can enter device management to modify the brand later. But we'll try, we'll start with those two. Uh, let's download the vehicle software in advance. That way we don't have to do it when we're in the car and we can do it on Wi Fi. All right, so we're all installed. Now we can go in the car. The reason I did this ahead of time, so I could download on Wi-Fi. It's a little faster, a little more convenient instead of just having to wait with the car on. Yeah, now we're good to go. So the first vehicle we're gonna test is my 2007 Range Rover Supercharged. So we're gonna grab the top down car pal. So on this car, the OBD2 port is right here. So I'm gonna plug it in. Keep in mind this clip here, this retaining tab is gonna make it grab in really well. There we go. And we got the light turned on, so we're getting power. Next, we're gonna turn the ignition to on. And we're gonna hit connect now. In Bluetooth, we wanna go find CarPal. It's got four numbers, those are gonna be unique to your scanner. We'll connect. CarPal would like to communicate with the top down CarPal. Uh, allow. We got a firmware update. We'll do that real quick. All right, we're updated. And now we can do a full vehicle check. So the first thing it does is read the VIN. All right, we got the VIN. We'll confirm that. Let's see, Range Rover L322 2007. AJV8 4.2 supercharged. Awesome. And we'll do auto scan. Ignition on, engine off. Whoa, it's going really fast. That's impressive. So as you can see, systems that aren't installed in the car are marked as not existing systems that exist but don't have any codes are marked as no DTC, and those that have codes are marked with fault counts. Uh, so as you can see, we have some issues in a bunch of systems. Let's take a look. So we've got in our PCM, powertrain control module, lost communicate with vehicle immobilizer control module. This could be for a number of reasons. Let's see what their assistant says. Let's see what it suggests. We got some info in mobilizer control module. It could be related to the key fob and security system. Check the power supply. So what I know is that 
These types of faults can happen when the battery voltage gets low. I recently had to have this car sit for a little while while I was away, so it's potentially related to that. I'm not 100% sure, but it does have some, you know, decent suggestions. Uh, let's see. Instrument cluster, medium can, speed communication bus, lost communication, lost communication, so lost communication with audio unit. It could be a voltage thing. Let's see, front lighting, I know this is an issue. Malfunction of right actuator, that makes sense. I know there was damage in the headlight when this car was crashed before I got it. Uh, parking aid, I know there's an issue there. Rear left, rear right, and front right center. So these are the ultrasonic sensors in my parking sensors that I would need to repair or replace, which is good to know. So what I'm gonna do is clear all DTCs. And you'll see some of them disappear, and that's most likely those that are related to low voltage. So these Land Rovers are particularly sensitive to low voltage like that. So just something to keep in mind. So we see light check module. I know this one's an issue. One of the bulbs is out. That's not going to fix itself. But some others, I know these lights work, so this could be a different issue. But yeah, that's the only system that has any problems now. Cool. Now, let's exit the auto scan. So something we could do, you check battery. We'll see right now, real time voltage. So it's for vehicles with 12 volt batteries, lead acid. Mm, I think I have an AGM, so that might not be the right type, but you can do the whole test here and just give you some information. Check voltage reference, get what it checks. Let's see what it says. Number one, turn off all systems. Nope, to confirm everything's off, we'll confirm that. We'll hit next. Tap confirm and start the vehicle. And we got our real time voltage. Our voltage dropped when we started. Startup data. Total time 253 milliseconds. Voltage before starting 10.8. Voltage while starting 10.7. After starting 12.81. And right now we are at 14 and a half. So our alternator is working. And complete, and that's all the information. That's good. Now that we're started, let's check live data. Equal speed sensor, we got intake air temp, 68. It is 70 degrees outside, that makes sense. Airflow rate from the math. Let's see if I press on the throttle. Increases. Relative throttle position. See it climbs when I rev. And take manifold pressure, timing advance, engine coolant too right here, engine RPM. So now with engine RPM, if we click on the little gauge right here, we can show our display, we can show a graph, we can show a, a gauge. Let's do that. See right here now we can have a live display of the engine RPM. So I'm gonna hit this throttle see it rev up and come back down. Speed sensor here is going to be while we're driving and things like that. So say for the speed sensor, set it up like this. So if you wanted to monitor it that way, all sorts of stuff here. And there we go. Now let's see, heads up display. We can have RPM and speed. Once it loads in, we'll have our RPM speed data right here and our live speed right here. There we go. And once I start driving, it would show the speed in real time. And then right here we have performance tests. So some warnings and you can see here, zero to 60 performance test. Once it gets all the data, you can hit start, and we'll see. We'll go find a safe spot to do the quick test and see how it does. So you can see in real time engine load, coolant temperature and speed, and RPM under the speed as well. All right. Now, of course, if you're gonna do this, make sure you do it in a safe place, private property, a road with an appropriate speed limit.
So with a slow acceleration, we got 10.5 seconds. Now I know this truck can do around seven seconds, seven to eight seconds, but I also don't want to put crazy amounts of strain on my drive line because it does have 180,000 miles. So now the next car we're going to test this in is this 2008 Mercedes CL63 AMG. Same thing, we're going to plug in the car pal down there. All right, let's do a full vehicle health check. All right, we've got motor electronics, transmission, adaptive brake, airbag, etc. Let's do a scan. Okay, we got some stuff we're going to need to work on. There's a lot of systems. It's a, it's a luxury car. A lot of stuff in it. Okay, here we go. So let's see what's going on with the EIS. Under voltage. Okay, so this sounds like these are stored codes from when before the battery was replaced in this car. Uh, KG. Under voltage. Under voltage. Right trunk clamp. That could be out. Left trunk clamp. Okay. Under voltage again, which is most likely linked to low battery in the past. Under voltage. So like I said, same thing as the Range Rover. These cars are sensitive to low voltage. Under voltage. Under voltage. <laughs> Everything is under voltage. And there you go. So I'll reset all that, but there's some investigating you need to do. I'm not gonna change anything right now, but we will see this car on the channel again. So subscribe if you wanna see me work on all these fixes and to see what else needs to be done. So now down here in the maintenance category, we have some special jobs, you know, like Oil reset, electronic parking brake, TPMS, DPF, BMS, and throttle. Now, some of the categories are not relevant to every car. This is not a diesel car, so there's no DPF and things like that. But this is where you'd find some typical jobs that you could need to do. Like the most common you're going to use is the oil reset. So that's really convenient. Now, the last few things we can look at in the app, we have mall, which is if you want to get a renewal for the cars you use, specific gateway unlocks and stuff like that and then service stuff repair guides warning light library actually it's pretty convenient you can see all the uh, different indicators and what they mean so nice to have that on hand there you go so that's the top down car pal it's really compact easy to use just throw it in your pocket throw it in your bag when you're going on a trip you can even leave it in your glove box and you have it ready to go to use whenever you need it. So overall, this is a really convenient tool to have if you like to work on your own projects, if you like to do maintenance on your own car, or if you just want to have more information before you go to a mechanic to know exactly why your check engine light came on. And I say a big thank you to Top Don for sending me this to review. And if you want to get one for yourself, I'll leave links in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, or you want to watch me work on cars, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.